Hello, my name is Derek Kinder, and I'm a hydraulic engineer with the Risk Management Center. In this video, we are going to discuss flood seasonality analysis in the RMC RFA software. Three analyses are performed in RMC RFA, flood seasonality, starting stage duration, and empirical frequency curve. This lecture will cover the flood seasonality analysis. The objective of this presentation is to understand how to perform a flood seasonality analysis in RMC RFA and how it will be used to inform the loading curve. Flood seasonality is the relative frequency of floods calculated on a monthly basis. In RMC RFA, a flood is defined as any event where the volume exceeds a user-defined threshold for the specified flow duration. This is sometimes referred to as the peak over threshold method. This image is showing which storms from the data set would be identified as flood events as they exceed the threshold flow. This plot is a result of a flood seasonality analysis, which shows the months or periods of the year during which floods have occurred based on the discharge gauge data. The relative frequency is calculated for each month RFA uses this information to sample the month during which a flood event occurs. In this example, flood events based on historical daily inflows can occur in most months throughout the year, but most often occur in May, and have not occurred in August through November. I'm going to compute a new flood seasonality analysis using RFA. First, I'll open a new flood seasonality window I can do this by right-clicking within the Project Explorer or by selecting Analysis in the File menu and selecting New Flood Seasonality. The empty Flood Seasonality window opens. Here I can enter the name and description. The Parameter window requires several inputs. First, we must select a discharge gauge from the drop-down menu. This drop-down menu is populated with all the discharge gauges previously entered. Select the discharge gauge reflecting the period of record to be used for the study. Now let's look at the threshold flow. The threshold flow defines what magnitude of event will be counted as a flood and should correspond to a specified frequency level from the volume frequency curve for the critical duration. For example, the threshold should typically correspond to something on the order of a two-year to 10-year return period. This is the threshold above which the flows will be selected as flood events. There are two conflicting goals in selecting a threshold for identifying rare floods. One, the threshold needs to be high enough so that only flood events are considered in the analysis. And two, there needs to be a flow data set with a long enough period of record so that a large enough sample of flood events is used to reduce errors due to small sample size. Considering these two goals, the threshold should typically be set to a rare enough frequency that will still provide a sufficiently large sample size. A rule of thumb is to select the largest return period or smallest annual exceedance probability that produces a sample size on the order of 30 to 40 flood events. Determining an appropriate threshold flow is often an iterative process. The next input needed is critical duration. This should correspond to the critical duration for the inflow volume frequency curve. The final inputs needed to run the analysis are the maximum events per year and the minimum days between events. These values should be estimated by inspecting your data. How many floods above the threshold occur in a typical year? How far apart do flood events need to be to consider them as being independent floods? You can also use a guess and check approach to balance these inputs with your threshold flow in order to come up with 30 to 40 events. So, back to RMC RFA. Let's first try the 10% exceedance probability value and see how many events we get. The 10% exceedance probability value can be found from the volume frequency curve. From this chart, we see that the median is approximately 50,000 CFS. Let's use that value to start. Next, we input the critical duration. 
For this example, the critical duration is three days, and we just used the flow value from the three-day volume frequency curve, so we'll use that number here to be consistent. Now we are going to input the maximum events per year. If you are unsure how many data points your initial flow threshold will yield you, you can start with a conservative estimate on the high side of five events per year. For a more educated guess, you should inspect the flow data. Finally, input the minimum days between events. This parameter is used in conjunction with the maximum events per year. What we are trying to accomplish with these two inputs is independence between events. This can be determined by visual inspection of the flow time series to see the typical time between large flow events. Let's look at the data and try to determine the time between large flow events. Here I've zoomed in on 2015, a year that represents a typical year from the data set. From visual observation, we can tell that the threshold flow of 50,000 CFS is exceeded three times this year. This is less than our max number of events value of five, which means that all three floods will be included in the analysis. We have a relatively long period of record, so we don't necessarily need multiple events from every year. But these results seem reasonable for now. It's an iterative process. Next, let's focus on the time between events. Looking more closely at a few events, this December event ended around the 3rd, and the next event appears to start around the 23rd. That's 20 days between these two events. Based on the data and our understanding of these events, they appear to be independent. We can start with 20 days for the time between flood events. Remember, there is some engineering judgment involved in the process. So, now that we enter the 20 minimum days between events and hit compute, we see that we returned only six flood events. This is too small of a sample. I think we should take a closer look at the threshold flood and reduce it. I'm going to split the difference between the two and five year flows. Let's try 30,000 CFS. Using a threshold flow of 30,000 CFS returned 33 events. This is good and within the rule of thumb range of 30 to 40 events. The distribution of events appears reasonable with May and December returning the highest number of events, which we know are flood seasons for this reservoir. Let's check the events that were selected and make sure they correspond to high pool events. This is the tab for flood events. I can see that some of the top pool events are present in this table, which is a good indication of reasonable results. The histogram of events shows how often the reservoir starting stage duration will be sampled from that particular month for an RMC RFA simulation. So in our case, no reservoir starting stages will be sampled from the months of July or August, and the majority will be sampled from May, November, and December. We will talk about reservoir starting stage duration in another lecture. There is the option to manually enter into this table. Right click in the table and select manual data entry. Then you can see that the frequency column is unlocked and you can edit the relative frequency for each month. For this example, the final seasonality was manually changed using analysis results from outside of RFA based on annual maximum stage events. You should perform a flood seasonality for any duration that you are examining. Our example has a flood seasonality for the critical inflow duration of three days only. For reservoirs that are regulated to fill to a target stage each year, a seasonality analysis based on stage will typically result in a stage frequency curve that has better agreement with observed stages in the frequent portion of the curve. A stage-based seasonality analysis can be developed by evaluating annual maximum stage, daily stage, and the reservoir rule curves. Always compare the infrequent part of the curve to make sure there is reasonable agreement between the flow-based seasonality analysis and the stage-based seasonality analysis. If there is not reasonable agreement, two separate curves may need to be developed and then blended into a final stage frequency curve. The stage-based seasonality would be used for the frequent part of the curve and the flow-based seasonality would be used for the infrequent part of the curve. 
You should now have an understanding of flood seasonality, how to complete the flood seasonality in RMC RFA, and be introduced into how it's used in the RMC RFA software.